Uh, so a little change of pace. Vet-centric is, uh, is not human health care. Uh, we're in the uh, veterinarian space. It's a, um, a very dynamic market. Uh, and I think that, uh, that the story here is, is one that, uh, that will be very compelling to folks who are very aware of, of uh, some of the challenges in the human healthcare uh, market as well. So Pet Pharmaceuticals it has, the, has the benefit of both um, the retail space but also the human healthcare space in the sense that uh, people are extremely loyal to the, to the uh, well-being of their pets. Uh, so you have the benefit of almost mandatory uh, and compulsory care, but you, have the you also have the benefits of, of having a retail model where, uh, where folks come in, there's no regulatory risk, there's no reimbursement risk, um, uh, and as a result of that, you know, you've got cash payments on, on demand. Uh, so uh, as, um, as customers come in, you've got great stickiness of demand as well as uh, great certainty of payment. At the same time, uh, it's also a very large and growing market. In the last couple of years, you're talking about a market that is over $50 billion in size that has grown about 6% a year, even through recessionary times. So great consumer st uh, stickiness, great consumer growth. Um, VetCentric is a post-revenue company. So while there's a lot of uh, folks here that are looking for funding uh, to, uh, to help their companies grow uh, from a pre-revenue state, we are already on the market. We've been on the market for about 10 years. Today, we're about $15 million of revenue. Um, and we're in a market and a space that's got tremendous growth. So, and what VetCentric does is we're the largest provider of home delivery services for veterinarians. And what that means is that we give veterinarians the opportunity to take um, advantage of home delivery uh, through their in internal pharmacy in their clinic. Um, that gives them the chance to compete straight up with direct-to-consumer uh, companies like Pet Meds or Doctors Fosters and Smith or even Amazon and do it in a way that allows the veterinarian to maintain the trust relationship that they have with their clients. Um, ours is a business to business model uh, as opposed to the direct to consumer models that are uh, prevalent uh, with pet meds and, and those types of competitors. Our market is about $5.7 billion um, and that market is the market for regulated products and therapeutic diets. Um, that market has grown over 5% a year and is projected for the last couple years and is projected to grow in the 5 to 7% range over the next decade, which would take the market to about a $10 billion market by 2020. What's important about that is that as the market uh, sits today, only about 7% of this this $5 billion market is distributed and consumed, or I should say acquired by, by uh, pet owners through home delivery. Um, it is widely uh, d uh, postulated and demonstrated uh, through the industry that that number will grow to about 20% of consumer demand being consumed, being purchased via home delivery. So while the market today for home delivery uh, for pet, uh, for regulated pet uh, products and therapeutic diets is less than $400 million. By 2020, it's going to be about a $2 billion market. This market, as I mentioned before, is split between the direct-to-consumer models of pet meds and the B2B models like VetCentric. In the B2B space, uh, the entire aggregate uh, volume right now is well under $40 million of, of, uh, of annual revenue. VetCentric is by far the largest player in that market. If I took the, my five leading competitors combined, their entire revenue would still be only about 75% of, of where my company is. So we're in the, in the process of, of uh, getting to some significant growth. Why is what we do important to vets? Well, it's important to vets because we help them maintain and, and actually benefit their practices in three very important areas. The first area is the financial side of their practice. More and more clinics are seeing uh, degradation of revenue to, to the pet meds of the world and to, to other, um, uh, especially hospital services. Their ability to hold pharmacy revenue, which is about 25% of their overall revenue, is very important to them. Um, so on the financial side, we help, we help clinics by increasing uh, not only sales, but also increasing um, uh, contribution and decreasing the working capital that's required to them uh, to manage their practices. And the average veterinary clinic is a million dollar uh, 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 revenue uh, 
uh, outlet. Uh, so every every dollar that they've got available to save on capital uh, investment is very, or working capital is very important. And the reason why that's important is is that vets more and more today are looking for the, the capacity to invest in capital equipment which enhances their service revenue. If I can save a clinic $10,000 of working capital on pharmacy goods, then they can apply that to, to new lasers and, and other tools which will significantly enhance their their, ser their, um, their service uh, and diagnostic revenue, and that's, that's a very important thing to them. So on the financial side, greater revenue, um, greater contribution, and improved capital resources. On the compliance side, on the medical side, what we do is, is because our home delivery services have the same benefits and compliance that a lot of the human PBM service models have, we have the ability to significantly enhance compliance levels within the clinics. And as a result of that, um, that drives better medicine. Um, in addition, we offer about 5,000 products in our pharmacy. The average clinic may have a couple of hundred, which allows them to uh, provide greater specificity of care uh, to treat exactly what uh, uh, a, a pet needs. And so their ability to provide that, that, uh, that level of care enhances their, their medical outcomes as well. And the third area where we really help clinics, the average vet is, is pretty much a mom and pop kind of shop. Their ability to provide state of the art, um, e-commerce type of transactional um, uh, uh, sales opportunities for their, uh, or service opportunities for their constituents, it just doesn't exist. By offering an e-commerce platform, on a virtual basis to clinics, we provide them the ability to really enhance their service touch to their, to their clients, and that is more and more uh, of an important attribute for clinics as well. We do business with about 5,000 clinics in the U.S. Right now, there are about 25,000 clinics overall in the U.S. companion animal uh, industry. Um, so. Uh, so that, that talks a little bit about what we do, how we do it. A couple of things that are very important, again, with, without the visuals, it's a little bit difficult to show this, but one of the reasons why this company is in, in such a strong position for growth is that we have, uh, over the last decade, put together quite a, um, uh, an extensive um, and, and, and very uh, robust platform, which includes uh, transactional components, service components, uh, technical components, the, the most recent of which is an integration into the practice Practice management, <clears throat> practice management systems, which sits on the desktop of of our clinics, and um, uh, that's an important breakthrough. We're the only company in the industry that does this by integrating into the practice management systems on clinic, uh, on the clinic desktop. We're able to uh, pull not just demographic information from a from a prescription, but also uh, the formulary uh, information that matches exactly what that prescription is within the clinic to our pharmacy back in Baltimore and can fill those orders very uh, quickly and efficiently. So we've greatly and significantly streamlined the process of getting the 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 uh, the um, uh, prescription out of a clinic and into our into our uh, order capture system. In addition, as prescriptions are filled, we have the ability to, to auto update the patient records, which creates increased efficiency at the clinic level. This is an important kind of step because this provides not just an ease of, of, of use for the clinic and, a, and also increased efficiency for our systems, but it also creates a, um, a, a virtual barrier to entry as nobody else in our industry, as I mentioned, has that level of technology. So uh, we've worked uh, very hard to, uh, to establish our leadership position. We're in a position right now where if we take a look at, at what our market opportunity is as a $15 million company, um, we believe that, uh, that, that uh, you know, this, the opportunity in, in companion animal home delivery is a $2 billion opportunity. The market's going to split between the D2C and the B2B companies, uh, leaving uh, anywhere from $500 million to a, a billion dollars in each business model. Um, as the leading company in that space, we believe that we're uh, absolutely in, in, uh, in, in King's position to capture the lion's share of that billion dollars or so that, that'll be coming into the B2B market. We look for five-year growth to be in the 150 to $200 million range, and um, uh, you know, so significant growth, but very realizable growth. As a proxy, pet meds has grown from, from about $10 million of revenue to $240 million over the last decade. The big difference is 
They've had to work off of a uh, off of a heavy advertising model to consumers, where we have the backing of the veterinarian. And as we uh, simplify our model and become uh, a greater tool for the vet, um, their support in, in uh, pushing our revenue model is is going to be a far easier battle than pet meds has had to fight. So I think we're probably low on time, but. Uh, uh, I appreciate y'all's attention. Sorry about the visuals. I know that they'll be uh, loaded up in the in the post conference uh, uh, content. So, great. Tim, Good. Thank you okay. Thank you.